Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Dick. My purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. In today's video, I want to talk to you about something that's a little bit more inspirational and maybe to give you some hope because a lot of you are scared. A lot of you are afraid because of your DNA. And today I want to talk to you about why your DNA isn't your destiny. And I know a lot of you believe maybe you, you didn't win the genetic lottery somehow, God didn't like you, or you got bad luck, bad der, uh, germs, and, and bad genes. But I want to talk to you today about how you can actually change your genes and why your genes, just because you might have the genes for heart disease, or cancer or diabetes, it's not a death sentence. That doesn't mean you have to get it. So today I'm going to talk to you about something that can actually help you change your genes, change the sequence of them, maybe change how they're modified. And so it's really more about hope because like I said, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, why should I bother doing anything? Why should I eat right? Why should I exercise? There's no reason I should do that. Nobody makes a past 65 in my family. Everybody gets cancer or everybody dies early because they get heart disease. Or why bother eating right? Because you know what? I'm going to get diabetes anyway. Everybody in my family does. Well, today, like I said, is about giving you some inspiration and hope that you can beat this genetic lottery and that you can actually change how your genes are expressed. So you are not a victim, all right? you can actually alter how your genes are expressed. So watch to the end because I'm going to give you some specific examples of things you can do. So also, if you like what we're talking about, please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. So let's dive on into this. First of all, I know a lot of you feel like you just got bad genes. Like I said, you lost the genetic lottery. It's God didn't like you. You've got people in your family that no matter what they do, they just seem to be sick and suffering, and you're concerned about it yourself. But I want to tell you, you don't have to go out and get genetic surgery. You don't have to get things that will, will alter your DNA. You can do it yourself. You have the ability to do it inside. And it's based on a principle and a science that we call epigenetics. Now, how many of you heard about that? If you do, make sure you type in the comments section if you've heard about it. But very few, in fact, when I do this presentation all over the country, very few people have ever heard of epigenetics. And I'm telling you, this is a game changer. This is something that you want to know. And I honestly don't think the media, and I'm not trying to sound like a a uh, conspiracy theorist, but maybe medicine doesn't want you to know about this because they don't want you to know that you are in control of your health. Yes, you can actually change how your genes are expressed. And really what epigenetic states is this, that the choices you make the foods you eat, the things that you are exposed to, for example, toxins, or if you're exercising or not, like I said, what kind of foods you're eating can actually change your genetic expression. Did you know that the foods you eat can actually change how your genes are expressed when it comes to heart disease or cancer? Or here's something that most people never think about, is your nerve system coming from a chiropractic standpoint? How do you think your brain tells your body how to work? How do you think your brain tells your body how to make new cells? Your brain has to send messages down through that cable that we call a spinal cord, out through the nerves to all the organs. So how does your brain tell your heart how to replace cells or your liver or your spleen or your kidneys? It's because of your nerve system. So one thing we never think about is how your nerve system is working. So Time Magazine did an article on this where they said why your DNA isn't your destiny. And they said the choices you make can actually change your genes and those of your kids. And we're going to go into detail on that later on. But that's empowering. That's, that's life changing because what it does is it puts you in control of your health. So you don't have to worry about whether your father or your mother had heart disease or cancer or your aunt or uncle has diabetes. You can actually beat it. And what they found was this. This is what the research shows. What we now are learning is that our genes are part of a large flexible network. Contrary to what we believe, our genes aren't fixed and rigid as most of us have been led to believe. Today, no one doubts that epigenetic effects play a crucial role in development, according to Michael Skinner. Nova's Ghost in Your Genes uh, documentary says it now appears that our diets and lifestyle can change the expression of our genes. How? By influencing a network of chemical switches within our cells collectively known as the epigenome. So there you have it, guys. Your epigenome, well, what does that mean exactly? Well, you have your genome. Your genome, of course, is your DNA, but there's something above that which is called your epi or above the gene. And it turns out the epigenome can actually change how your genes are expressed. There's more. The evidence linking epigenetic process with cancer is becoming extremely compelling. They account for one third to one half of genetic alterations. Epigenetic effects occur not just in the womb, 
but over the full course of human life, according to Bob Weinhold, Epigenetics the Science of Change. Not only that, Jean-Pierre Issa said this, and there's much more potential for the epigenome to be affected in cancer, atherosclerosis, and Alzheimer's than the genome itself. It's more fluid and more easy to be the culprit. Michael Skinner said this in A New Kind of Inheritance, but nurture matters too. Many of the contingencies of life that we eat, what pollutants in our environment, and how often we're stressed affect how the genes operate. So you've seen it. Our pollutants that we're exposed to, stresses that we have, how our mind works. Did you know that your mind, the way you think, can actually change how your genes are expressed? Your genes can be resequenced. Dr. Bruce Lipton, one of the foremost molecular biologists in the world, in his book called Biology of Belief, talks about how our mind can actually change how our genes are expressed, that we can cut and splice and resequence our genes. I mean, that's groundbreaking, and I bet you never heard about that. Well, guys, I'm glad I'm able to teach it to you today because I want to put the power in your hands. I want you to know that you're not a victim of your genes. You can change, like I've said over and over, how your genes are expressed. And I'm going to beat that up because I want you to really get that. That just because your mama or your daddy had certain problems, certain diseases, or your uncle, does not mean that you're going to get it at all. And all the research is now showing that. Bruce Lipton, your children's genes reflect only their potential, not their destiny. It's up to you to provide the environment that allows them to develop to the highest potential. What Dr. Bruce Lipton did as far back as the late 60s is what he did was he would take the genes out of a cancer cell. So in other words, the brains of a cancer cell, the genetic makeup, he would then enucleate it, which means he takes the nucleus out and puts it into a normal cell. Now, what do you think would happen? Well, logic would say, well, if you take the genes out of this, cancer cell and put it into a normal cell, well, of course, the normal cell is going to become cancerous, right? Of course. It makes sense. That's not what happened. That's not what happened at all. What they found was this. The cell was a normal cell. Why? Because the environment of the cell determined how the genes were expressed. He also went on to take stem cells, and he put stem cells in different medium, different petri dishes. And he just altered the changes and just made subtle changes to each of the dishes. And what they found was some grew muscle cells, some grew bone cells, and some grew fat cells. Well, how is that? They started from the same stem cell. But think about that too. Don't we all start from two cells that come together and make one cell, and then that cell multiplies, 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 two, four, a 16, 32, 64, and so on, our cells keep multiplying from an original type cell. Well, how does the cell know how to differentiate? Think about that. How does a cell know how to differentiate and become a heart cell, a liver cell, a spleen cell, a kidney cell, a stomach cell? Well, it knows how to differentiate because of the environment it's going to be in. So the environment we're finding dictates how the cell will express itself. So let's pretend your cells are basically like a factory, a cell factory. Think of it that way. So in this factory, except we're going to make sporting goods equipment, OK? So in this factory, you can make tennis rackets and footballs and baseballs and baseball bats. You can make all these different things. And in this factory, you have the blueprints to make all these different things. You have blueprints to make baseballs, blueprints to make footballs, blueprints to make tennis rackets, and so on and so forth. Well, what's going to determine what you make? The order is coming in from the outside, right? So all of a sudden, you get a call at the factory and it says, hey, can you make 10,000 footballs and ship it to Kansas City? Sure, no problem. You get out the blueprint, you put the blueprint out, you start printing out the balls. Then all of a sudden, a call comes in and says, I need 5,000 tennis rackets. Not a problem. We can make those too. We take out the blueprint for the tennis rackets, lay it out, and start printing out tennis rackets. What if we wanted some new baseball bats? And this order comes in and says, hey, can you make me 15,000 baseball bats and ship it to Florida? Not a problem. Take out the blueprint to make the football, I mean the baseball bats, and start making baseball bats. It's just that simple. So think of it like your body and your cells are factories. They have the DNA, the blueprints inside, but the order is going to determine which blueprints are used. If you were an architect, you might have blueprints for a skyscraper, you might have blueprints for a a small ranch style house, you might have blueprints for a, an office building, whatever it may be. The blueprints you're going to choose 
are the ones from the orders. Whatever someone comes in and says, build me this house, build me this building, build me this shed, whatever it may be, that's the blueprints that you're going to use. Well, your body works exactly the same way. Whatever the environment calls for, whatever's outside the cell, so for example, whatever physical stresses are outside the cell, emotional stresses or chemical stresses are going to determine what that cell makes on the inside. So with the environment the cell is in. So if there's certain chemicals outside, well, the cell has to make certain molecules, certain proteins, certain compounds to be able to defend itself. So it alters itself. So if it's in a toxic environment, if you have a toxic fish tank, isn't that going to change the cells of the fish? Isn't the fish going to start to maybe die or develop cancer or tumor cells? It wasn't the cells, the, the fish's fault. It's the environment that it's in. How many times have you heard about this? People, for example, and I just saw a documentary on this, and I'm not trying to point fingers, so please don't hear this if anybody's from Russia, but I just watched a documentary on Chernobyl, and they were talking about the different people exposed to different radiations develop different tumors. Once again, yes, you may have a genetic predisposition to something, that you may develop a certain kind of tumor over someone else who's a genetic predisposition to some other type of tumor. But what's going to determine it is the outside environment, how it's going to cause the DNA inside to become expressed. So whatever stresses you're exposed to, physical, chemical, or emotional, is going to determine what is done inside that cell. And we see this in real life too. We have one person who's exposed themselves to a healthy lifestyle. They eat fresh fruits and vegetables, they eat high quality fats, high quality proteins, they eat good food, okay? They eat very clean as I like to promote. They get physical exercise, they have a good mental attitude, they are praying and meditating and they're, they're keeping their mind clean and pure. There's not a lot of negativity, not a lot of stresses. And not that we have to eliminate all stresses in our lives, but you know what I mean. You're around certain people that are just negative all the time and they're always sick all the time, right? Once again, their environment and how they're perceiving their environment is going to change how their genes are expressed and it's expressed as sickness and disease. And then you have someone over here who's eating all kinds of you know, soda and pizza and you know, popcorn and candy and cake and all this other junk and they, they're, they're messy, they're a high stress lifestyle, they're just not taking care of themselves. And you start to look at it and you see this person here is going to develop disease, this person here is healthy. Your bodies are always doing one of two things. You always need to know this. Your bodies are either building health and wellness or they're building sickness and disease. Your lifestyle determines which direction you go. Stop blaming your genes. Your genes are just expressions of your environment. Okay, sorry to get a little tough with you, a little tough love there, but it's the truth. It's not your mommy's fault, not your daddy's fault, and it's not your uncle's fault, and it's not God's fault. Don't blame God either. Okay, I want you to be as healthy and well as God created for you to be. And I believe all of our bodies are designed to be healthy and well, but you can't break the natural laws that God created and think you're going to get away, from, uh, get away with it. So if you're eating healthy and well and have a healthy and well lifestyle, you're eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables and so on, and once again eating uh, quality proteins and quality uh, fats, you're building a healthier lifestyle. You're moving your body, you're exercising it. You're getting out into the sun. I did a video where I talked about getting out into the sun. I can't tell you how many people messaged me. I had one lady, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to call anybody out, but it was so beautiful and so emotional. Thank you so much for sending me this message. It was a lady from Pakistan who said because of the fashion that she has to wear, and obviously she's got to be limited in how much skin exposure she has, she said, I don't know what to do. It was right after I did the video on, on tanning and, and getting out into the sun. I said this. I said, is there any way that you can get your body exposed to the sun in a non-public way? And so she tried. I got a message back from her within a couple of days saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much better I feel. I'm sleeping. My stress is down. My vitamin D levels are up. In fact, her daughter, who was taking vitamin D injections and you know, vitamin D supplements, she said her daughter's better mood, better energy, sleeping better, not depressed. I mean, isn't that amazing? Why? Because our bodies are designed to be out in the sun. Get out in the sun. And I'm not trying to you know, uh, make this a video about the sun, but it's about our environment, the environment we put ourselves in. Is your environment health and wellness, or are you creating sickness and disease? Is it healthy, or is it toxic? Which one is it? If you're in a toxic relationship, guess what? You're going to be building damaged cells. You're going to make cells that are expressing sickness and disease. Once again, it's not your genetics. It's the environment that you're putting yourselves in. 
So once again, guys, like I said, in a recap, not to keep beating this up, but it's not about your genetics. It's not about the fact that your family might have a history of heart disease. Mine does. Mine also has a uh, family history of cancer. Nobody dies of diabetes in my family. But heart disease and cancer, big time. Everybody. One of the two. But I take care of myself differently. Much differently. I'm building health and wellness, staying away from sickness and disease. I'm doing things to bring my body this way rather than bring my body this way. Okay, does that make sense? All right. Well, hopefully this made a lot of sense to you. Please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. Get this information out to other people that you know right now they are struggling, they are depressed, they're sick. Why? Because they think they just got a, dealt a bad hand, bad luck, bad germs, bad genes. God doesn't like them, whatever it may be. You need to let them know that their body was created by God to be healthy and well. And it's what we're doing to it that's allowing genes to be expressed or not. You could turn the genes for cancer on, or you could turn them off. It's up to you. You could turn the genes for heart disease on or off. It's up to you. All right? So once again, I hope this is great information for you. If so, please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you for all your support. I appreciate it. I love and appreciate you. Thanks. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.